Hello everyone, I'm Adam Habigan, and welcome to the ASMR talk show. The show that feels good to hear. ASMR stands for Autosensory Meridian Response. Certain people, maybe you're one of them, when they hear whispers or soft sounds, delicate noises, they get a little tingle in their brain. And so we interview guests in soft voices on this show. Before we get into tonight's interview, an amazing thing has been happening in uh, Los Angeles throughout the summer of 2017. Quentin Tarantino is, uh, at the time of this recording, still working on a movie called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And not much is known about the movie, but it takes place in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, in 1969. And for this movie, instead of doing it on a soundstage, they're using over 150 real locations recreated to look how they looked back in 1969. So we're talking Hollywood Boulevard, the Valley, Westwood Village, and you know, he's old fashioned, so they're not using CGI. There's been whole blocks of the city, this has been going on for months, that have been basically transformed for a few days to back in time, to the swing in 60s. And as a history buff, and a music buff, and a movie buff, to see this all going on and get to walk through these sets, it's uh, really surreal. And so I've been following the production all over town. I'll see the old cars, I'll be like, oh, I know, they're filming there, and you'll see Quentin Tarantino out there, and it's, it's uh, really amazing to get to experience a movie kind of while they're still making it. So I was cruising around town the other day, and I was sort of tripping out, I was like, okay, so this movie they're making is gonna have, you know, the story unfolding, but the backdrop are gonna be all these buildings from 1969. I should make a movie someday about Los Angeles in 2018, and it has all these buildings from the 60s, because Quentin Tarantino is like, like this, these buildings are the backdrop to my own story. And then I got, I was really tripping out. I was like, wow, what if this is the movie? You know, like it exists in this like fifth dimension where you have your own story and like the, you interact with the set and stuff. And uh, you know, forever, I'll always, when I see this movie, I'll always see them, I'll always remember, oh yeah, I had that office on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, I was doing the ASMR talk show back then. And uh, I'm really excited, for, well, I hope it's good. It better be good. This would be a huge waste of time and money if it weren't, but um, Wishing you the best, Quentin, and uh, thanks for uh, preserving the city and dressing it up for us. My guest tonight has been called Chicago's weirdest rapper. He seems like a pretty nice guy to me, but we'll get to know him right now. Please welcome mul rapper, multi-instrumentalist, musician, Namdi Obanaya. How you doing, Namdi? Doing good. I'm doing real good. So you're on tour right now. I'm going to ask you the three worst questions to get as a touring musician. How's the tour going? Where did you play last night? And where are you playing next? The tour is going horrible. Oh, really? No, it's going amazing. Okay, good. We played at the Echo in LA last night. Good crowd? Great crowd. Sick. Best All right. crowd. Awesome, yeah, the sick. Best crowds are the ones that show up. <laughs> and what was the other question? Where are you going next? We're going to... Which is the worst question you get yeah. on tour. Because I never remember. And what, you're going to come? Yeah. Oh, I'll drive six you, hours. You yeah. might. I think it's really close. I think you're in Santa, Santa Barbara next. Santa Barbara. It's an hour and a half. Yeah, so you're coming, right? <laughs> I'll see you there. Wait, I got to tell us this talk show. Oh, you got a thing? <laughs> we'll see. You know, may, you might see me. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, so you, um, I was listening to your music. It's very eclectic. You've got some rock in there, you got some hip hop, obviously, you got some world music. Yeah. But everyone calls you a rapper. That seems to be what they pigeonhole you into first. Yeah. Why do you think that is? That's because uh, people have only heard my last album. <laughs> and that's and the rap album? That's rap. Okay. <laughs> but you've been in like f 10, 15 bands, you think? Yeah, I play drums. I'm a drummer, mainly. So that's what you would say you are yeah. first. I'm a drummer. You're a drummer. Yeah. It 
it's been my experience that drummers are, unless it's somebody like Keith Moon, like somebody really off, mm -hmm. seem to be the most reliable guy in the band. Really? The guy who, well, because this guy has a vehicle that can transport the drums. Yeah. Is that you? No. Okay, so you're... you're... <laughs> do not have a vehicle. <laughs> so somebody else has to move the drums? Yeah. I don't even own a drum set. You see, you show up to the gig and... Yeah, or just them. use friends' drums. But I've never heard the stereotype drummers are reliable, but I'm going to start using that. It's the guy who owns the van. Yeah. And the guy who has to, takes the longest to set up. Yeah, he has to start getting the hardware ready and stuff. So usually he's not drinking as heavy. No, they, then it could go the other way. Mm -hmm. it's like the first drummer of Blink-182, you know, he got fired and they really took off when they got somebody better. Yeah, shout so out Travis girl. Barker. But to have that, you know, they say a band is only as good as its drummer. That's true. Do you, you think that's true? Mm -hmm. Definitely. But the drummer's almost never the guy that answers the emails. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Hardly ever the leader of the band. True. For the most part, yeah. You have your exceptions. Just like exceptions your, to all rules. What's his name? Paul. I can't remember. Oh, Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel? From Genesis. Yeah. No. Is he the drummer? No. Pete? Phil Collins. There we go. Peter all Gabriel was days. also in Genesis. Yes, but Phil Collins was a pretty prolific and big leader. Also... Do you know about Phil Collins' uh, Alamo souvenir store? No. So if you're going through San Antonio on this tour, mm -hmm. Phil Collins has uh, arthritis or something, or hearing, he can't play the drums anymore, wow. basically. And a few years ago, he was in the airport, like flying, flying across, yeah. you know, doing his rock star thing. And this woman comes up to him and she's like, hey, and this is weird, but I'm a psychic, and I'm just getting a really strong feeling that in a past life, you were a cowboy who fought in the Alamo. And Phil Collins says, yes. I've always been interested in the American West, and this is just the proof that I need. So he has a souvenir store across the street from the Alamo, so he can tunnel underneath and do excavations. He spends about a fourth of his time in San Antonio investigating the Alamo now. Wow. How much of a percentage does that lady get of the shop? <laughs> and I don't know if they've actually found anything yet, yeah. but if it's Phil Collins' Alamo shop. So I'm saying if the drumming doesn't work out. Start an Alamo shop? Yeah. Or whatever you're into. Cool. I, I don't think that will be what I do. <laughs> do you believe in past lives? Uh, for other people. <laughs> Not for me. I hear this is, <laughs> this is it. This is one and done. Uh, so you're from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they call you the weirdest rapper in Chicago? I know it's a flashy headline. Because... <laughs> People don't know how to categorize things that are different. <laughs> That's true. It's always, oh, it's weird. Yeah. It's odd. Yeah. It's Chica just, just different. <laughs> Chicago does have a high percentage of eccentric performers, particularly really black performers. It really does. Wesley Willis. So crazy. R.I.P. Shuby Taylor, the human hey. horn. Hell yeah. T. Valentine. Yes. And David yeah. Liebehart. Yes. All from... Legends. Chicago, yeah. Legends. What do you think it is about Chicago? And the new chess records and stuff. But what do you think about uh, Chicago? Maybe Lake Michigan water. I think it is something in the water. Yeah. Or possibly, because all those guys are of the same generation, too. Yeah. Maybe some, like, FBI thing to, like, target the black community. You know, like some CIA thing. Maybe. <laughs> like, but it backfired. Back it actually made, it just made everyone awesome. Yeah, the most awesome, <laughs> inspired musicians. Yeah. Are you into trains at all? I've been into trains. <laughs> like, like as a, like you're as like a, a rail fan. Yeah. Like a hobby, like toy trains, or just like the like train the, enthusiast. The train enthusiast. I wouldn't call myself a train okay. enthusiast. A lot of people in Chicago like trains. Yeah. Because they still have a lot of them there. We do. But these ones are not as fun as the choo-choo trains. And a lot of them smell like pee. <laughs> so not as, not as cool. You like f fresh smelling trains? I like fresh pee. These ones smell like old pee. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, fresh peas aren't so bad. <laughs> Unless they're eating asparagus. Yeah. Does that, wait, does that make your pea smell different? Certain people. Oh, well, everyone's pea smells different with asparagus. Certain people can smell it. Certain people can't. This is great to know. I guess you can't. This is great news. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got some ice cream bars over here. Oh. You love ice cream, right? I do love ice cream. It seems mm -hmm. to be kind of a, a, a theme in your music. Wow, Whoa. okay. This is how they make ice cream bars. Really? Yeah. Amazing. I don't even know what type that is. Chocolate? Yeah, I think it's the, the, um, the vanilla with the... With the chocolate coating? Yeah. What's your yes. favorite? Favorite ice, ice cream? cream flavor and method of delivery for the ice cream. I really like... I just got into this flavor a couple weeks ago. The Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia. Yeah, big time. Big fan. Didn't think I would like it that much, and I, now I love it. Ben and Jerry's, I th well, Hagen dazs is the best ice cream. Ben and Jerry's is most unique. Yeah, they're very creative with their branding. I heard that your new album comes with a popsicle stick in it. They did. Like the first 100 or 150 or something had a popsicle stick in it. You're a popsicle stick? Yeah. So you ate 100 popsicles? I ate more than 100 popsicles. And, and over what period of time? <laughs> a very short period of time for art. Yeah. Did, is there, is there, did you document this or any way? No. You just ate them? Yeah. <laughs> It's a collector's item right there. Yep, it's got my saliva on it. You can get cloned. Oh no, please don't. Actually do it. Yeah. Clone. Yeah. If well, anyone can, has that technology, you please could, do it. You could clone your three nomdies, play a band, play a little trio. Yeah, that band wouldn't be that good though. You don't think so? Nah, maybe if all of them played drums, it'd be okay. <laughs> I saw you on guitar, though. You were, you know, on some videos. Fine. Yeah. I'm all right. Yeah. I can play some of the things I write. <laughs> what kind of music are you into? I mean, it's very eclectic, but, yeah. like, give me some of your top. Uh, I'm really into, uh, I like Paul Simon a lot right now. I like show tunes. I like Shaq West. Are you the kind of person who is always looking for new music or do you have like the same music you've kind of always liked and then that's all you listen to? Um, both. I go back and forth but sometimes I listen to the same song on repeat for days and then other days I just go on blogs and try to see what has come out and see what people are listening to. Do you feel this is somebody who's a contemporary musician? Do you feel it's important to keep up on what other people are doing? Uh, for me it is. I like to know what people are into, just not even to fuel my creativity, just to like understand people more. I feel like it's important to connect with people if you're a musician, because that's what usually what you're trying to do. So it's good to know what's going on. And um, your your father has a online ministry. And he lives out in L.A., right? You're in Chicago. Yeah. But I thought, so did you see him like when you were in L.A.? Did he come to your show? Uh, I think he's uh, out of the country. Oh, okay. I didn't see him this time. But, what, yeah. What's the online ministry like? Uh, it's. It's online, it's also, he, he travels a lot and teaches. Okay. Yeah. What was that upbringing like? It was. was you were you in like a church house, huh? Yeah, yeah. I went to, went to church every Sunday. And I don't know, it wasn't strange to me <laughs> until after. <laughs> no, but it was good. Yeah, I think it kind of doesn't really matter your upbringing as long as it's a good upbringing yeah like whatever like your parents are into as long as like i mean you learned how to play drums so yeah like they weren't you know a lot, a lot of good came out of it yeah you have a record label too right yes, yes i do 
Super Records? Super Records, yeah. You see, is that the correct pronunciation of that? Super Records. Super. Yeah. Kind of got to sing it every time. Super <laughs> Records. I like that. You definitely have a knack for the, the tunes. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of stuff you put out on this label? All sorts of stuff. Some weird rap. Some very cool poppy solo artists. Um, some rock bands. Just stuff I like. Stuff me and the other two people that run it like. Oh, so there's only three of you doing it? Yeah. And are you, is it, was it started to put out your own music? Um, we knew we were going to put out my own music, but the intention is just to, that we knew a lot of musicians we liked that not a lot of other people know about. So our intention was to like help those people get to the next level, myself included. When you think of projects like that, because, you know, having eclectic music, you know, it, mm -hmm. I'm sure you could be like, well, I'm going to do a whole show tunes album. I'm gonna do, you could just kind of like churn them out, but then it gets kind of like, you know, bands have a huge discography and it's kind of intimidating. You're like, well, yeah. how can I, where do I get started here? Yeah. Do, do you think of it project wise or are you trying to build just like a persona? I think of it project to project. Yeah. Not so, particularly trying to build a persona, but rather just put out projects that I'm proud of that are like standalone items. But kind of have like a cohesiveness to yeah. them? Yeah. That they all... So are you a album person? Like, do you personally, do you like to listen to albums? Do you like singles better? It depends on the artist. Yeah, for that's definitely. True. There are definitely some yeah. bands that are... But like, just so like, as you're talking and, and from listening to music, I think it's sort of like, uh, you remind me a little bit of Damon Alburn from Gorilla. Gorilla. It's yeah. Blur, too. Yeah. And um, he's done a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's amazing. The Gorilla stuff is like, you know, big number one albums yeah. and stuff. And the solo stuff is... It's cool, too. Yeah, it's all really cool. Yeah. Some of it gets really popular. Yeah. Some of it doesn't. But he's able, and it all kind of sounds like him. Yeah. He's got his own thing going on. He, he has his formula. <laughs> and it is formula. It's interesting, Blur only had one hit. I don't even remember their hit. I All I remember cool. about Blur is they did an interview with Nardwar, and they were really mean to him, so I don't like them. Because I love Nardwar. You have an interview by him? No. It'll come. I, it's my dream. And he might ask you about this ASMR interview. He might. He's probably watching right now. Nardwar, if you're watching this. <laughs> Ask Namdi about the ASMR talk ah. show when you interview him when he comes to Nardwar. Vancouver, Nardwar. Canada. Nardwar. Nardwar will be there next week. If not, I mean, <laughs> you stick with it. You seem like you're just his type of of, uh, of interviewee. I'm not even trying to think about it. If it happens, I'm going to lose my mind. He's, I met him once. He's, yeah. he's not like that. You know, it's like... You know, oh yeah, hey, what's up? And Bert, like whatever his name is, oh, nice to you. And then the thing will go on, it'll get all weird and stuff. Really? And he asks a lot of questions. I'm sorry if I'm giving away your thing. Oh, right. no, Nardwar. He asks a lot of questions where the person's like, what? What are you talking about? What? Like, he, he, he gets a lot of misses. But then when he asks but a really weird question, so oh, so great. Yeah, you can, miss, you can miss some balls, but when you keep knocking them out the park, I do happy. like it when the, the band like isn't into it, too. Yeah. It's, it always makes it better. I like watching them, but it makes me so mad. Watch the Blur one, though. They're so mean. Like, ridiculously mean to him. Shame on you, Blur. Did he ever interview Shame the Gallagher brothers? Oasis? I don't know if he did. That would be great. That would Because be they amazing. hate each other. Yeah. I love a band with two brothers who hate each other and them. <laughs> That's you, a very specific thing to love. No, there's a lot of them, though. <laughs> the, I don't know. The, 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 Jesus and Mary Chain. Yeah? Uh, the Kinks. The Kinks hate each other? Yeah. Damn. They're getting back together, I know. Come on, guys. It's your family. It's for your family, I know. The Beach Boys. Beach Boys had brothers in it? Yeah, they're all related. Really? Besides, the guitar player wasn't. Why did I not know that? 
The Wilson brothers, yeah. And then Mike Love, the singer, was her cousin. Okay. Yeah. I love the Beach Boys. Amazing. What? There's a couple made for TV movies in the 90s about like them fighting and like Brian going crazy and stuff. Yeah. You should check those out. On yeah. Your, oh, I would love that. That sounds when awesome. When you're on the bus, in a van, how are you talking about? We can. Are you with a band this, this outing? Yeah. This Played with a band. What are they doing tonight? I don't know. They texted me before this. <laughs> Probably gonna get food with them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell them, yeah. tell them I say what's Eat up. Eat some shrimp. <laughs> Do you have a routine when you're on tour, like to pass the time? Um, I've been reading a lot lately, just in the van. And other than that, just trying to get out in nature. Yeah, do you guys go to stuff while you're traveling? Yeah, I try to go out of my way to like visit some, either like some cool art galleries or take a walk in the forest every few days or something. Just keeps you sane. Yeah, and you're traveling too, you might as well enjoy it yeah. a little bit. Or else you just get stuck in the monotony of like, go to show, play a show, hang out for a bit, sleep, drive, do the same thing. You gotta add things for yourself. Those are, kind of from when I was on a tour, those are always the best times. Yeah. Just like, playing the show is usually fun. Between, the fun thing and then playing the show is the worst time. Yeah. That's when everybody just, argues. That's when you worry about how many people are going to show up. It's just also waiting. I hate waiting. It's, and it's tour is just mostly waiting. Get here at six o'clock. You play at midnight. Yeah. Here's two drink tickets. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with these? Drink one every three hours. Ah. I don't know. Yeah. Tour's great though. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. How, have you toured a lot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been going on the road? Um, since high school. Oh, okay, wow. Not with my own music, but with just different bands. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. Do you see that um, in your future a lot? Touring? Yeah. I feel like I'm going to do it less. Okay, yeah. It's just kind of, it gets kind of old. Yeah, I want to, there's still a lot of places I haven't been that I want to go to. Yeah. But definitely want and going to be doing it less in the future, focusing on more just writing. Would you ever write music for other artists? I would love to. If anyone wants me to do that, hit me up. Yeah. Do you write all your own music yeah. as it is? OK. You play everything? Yeah. You play kind of like Prince style? Like a, like a bad B-side Prince. <laughs> I get a little Prince vibe from you, a little bit. Yeah. Like Prince fell down an escalator, like perpetually. But he's <laughs> taking all the pills. Yeah, Prince on a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Falls down the escalator. Mm -hmm. It was funky though, it's good. Yeah. I Can like you... this one right now, the glasses <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Something about this one. This is good. Because they don't spill. No. They, oh, wait, no. A little bit. No, oh, no. The spill. <laughs> they cut it off right before the spill. These are just, um, uh, it gets into the other one, a little cross-contamination. Wow. Beautiful. There's something kind of sensual about this. Yeah. Don't you think? It's like. I mean, not between the two of us. I mean, if the wine ship glasses. <laughs> you can speak for yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> But yeah, it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah, we just, um, for these backgrounds, we just get stock footage. And um, I don't know, like, I guess for like a commercial for your wedding business or something, maybe you would use this. Yeah. Footage, but yeah, be there's no situation where I would just want to watch this toast, except for right now, a toast on a loop. Actually, yeah. no, this is very relaxing. Yeah, man, it's a, it's a good background. Yeah. And, you know, we were listening to your music when we found it. Oh, wow. So, see, so it's a, it exists in multiple dimensions. This is what my music inspires. Like, apparently. People toasting. Yeah. Cheers. Specifically when they're on the stock footage website <laughs> looking for stuff. Cheers. I tried to find more ice cream bar ones. Yeah. 
And this Not that money? No. Okay. Is there money in making your own stock footage? <sighs> I was there's gonna... so many things that I feel like people would want that they can't find. But you have to... Okay, there must be. Yeah. Or it wouldn't be available. Yeah. <laughs> but if you were just gonna like start your own stock footage business. Should I? On the that side. could be my Alamo There's shop. <laughs> Super Records. Yeah. And stock footage. Yeah. Which is some it. experimental hip hop <laughs> and a video of um, a, a couple eating dinner. Yeah. There's, oh, there's plenty of that. Chopping vegetables. Yes. Yes. I'm going to get very specific with specific vegetables. I'm going to have every type of vegetables, different types of knives, all the angles. It's going down. What's your your goal for uh, the next couple of months with your projects? And, and you know, well, how will you know when when this phase of the project is done? Like, how do you know when to move on? From a project? Um, I've already moved on. Oh. I've been working on lots of things, so it's just like a continuous cycle. Never really stop working on new things. So. Have you ever had writer's block before? I don't know. I don't think so. I think whenever I have writer's block, I still write things, but they're just not as good. <laughs> so you'll have like, yeah. like periods where you know you're just kind of lousy? Yeah, but I can also, I mean, as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, like, I don't have anyone to compete with or to like, the only person I'm up against is myself. So if I put write something, it's not up to my standards, then it's not up to my standards. Do you like being the band leader or the composer as opposed to just being a side guy, like a drummer or something? Yeah, I like I like being in control of everything. <laughs> and if there's somebody in the band you're not getting along with. They're out, yeah. they're out of here. Do you, think, do you think you're a nice band leader or a tough band leader? I think I'm nice. Sometimes too nice. Maybe. You're allowed to I'm be nice, a little picky. I'm nice, but I, I don't... I only surround myself with people that allow me to be nice. Like, people that wouldn't take advantage of me, like friends, people that are good, so I don't have to be mean or angry ever. Really. Is it kind of more important to you to work with people who you get along with off the stage over as opposed to, um, you know, like a really awesome guitar player that's like kind of a, kind of uptight. Yeah, especially if we're traveling in the same vehicle. Definitely. Yeah, that's very important. Well, wish the band a uh, hello for me. I, I hope will. you get a lot of shrimp or whatever other oh, yeah, so you want to eat. Uh, look for Namdi on the internet where you look for anything these days, Spotify, YouTube, Namdi. Ovanaya, fun name to say. Ovanaya, 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 